Hello good people and thank you for tuning in to another one of our tutorials. In this one, we're going to be exploring the Corona Lister functionality. Now, in case you don't already know what the Corona Lister is, it's a scene management tool with which you can easily access and tweak certain Corona specific functionality. So things like your Corona cameras, your Corona lights, your Corona displacement and your Corona's proxies, they can all be accessed and tweaked through this one simple tool. And if you want to tweak your chaos scatters as well, well, there is a chaos scatter lister we're going to be taking a look at in this tutorial as well. And so as you can probably already imagine, this can make working in your scenes a lot easier because say, for example, you want to select one single very specific Corona light. Uh, well, then uh, you don't have to with the lister, you don't have to go through all of those scene hierarchies and hunt for it there or hunt for it in the viewport. Uh, you can just bring up the lister and uh, select or tweak your Corona light from right there. Right then. So what we're going to be doing next here is we're going to be taking a look at how you can access the Corona lister. To access the Corona lister, uh, you just simply have to click on the lister icon in your Corona toolbar and then you're in action. OK, now, as far as the general functionality goes, you've got the uh, different categories of things you can list. OK, and generally here is where your objects from the selected categories are going to be listed. Now, you can tweak some of the most basic and often used parameters for the given types of objects. And you can also select any of the objects you'd like, just as you would in the viewport or your scene slash layer manager. It's just that you don't have to hunt for it uh, through your scenes hierarchy or in the viewport, right? Right. Uh, now, you can also select multiple objects at once just by simply hitting the select button on multiple objects. So that's also a thing. OK, so now we know how we can access the Corona Lister. And what we're going to be taking a look at next here is how handy the Corona Lister can be for when it comes to accessing and controlling your Corona cameras. First thing, though, if you want to be working with cameras here, well, uh, you'll want to make sure that you're in the camera category, right? Now, obviously, if you want to control your lights, uh, you're going to want to go in your light category and so on and so forth. But we're into cameras right now, so we're going to be in the camera category. In here, you'll have all your Corona cameras that you have in your scene listed, as you can see, right? Now, in this particular scene, uh, the layer manager is not really too cluttered. Everything is neatly organized, and so the cameras here are pretty easy to find. But imagine if this were a more complex scene and your cameras would be nested inside complex hierarchies. Uh, well, then you can probably already guess how useful the lister would be then. But now, even in such a simple scene, uh, the lister can still be super handy because let's say let's say we like the current camera angle, but we'd like to adjust the focal length for it. Well, what we can do here now is we can just locate our active camera, which is our camera A, as you can see right here, right? And well, then we can just adjust its focal length through the lister, just like that. So there's no need to go through all the menus inside your camera object or inside the scene slash layer manager. Now, to expand on that, what you can also do with the Corona Lister here is you can decide whether you want depth of field be active for your particular camera that you're working with. So in this case, we have this nice little close up camera angle. And what if we wanted to enable the depth of field for this camera? Well, it's real easy. We're just going to locate that camera and then we're going to toggle the DOF toggle to on. OK, and just like that, we, now we have depth of field going in our camera. But, you know, um, the effect is not that visible. What if we want that nice shallow depth of field for this close up? It's easy. You can just adjust the F stop value from right inside the lister. And there you go. Right. You get that nice shallow depth of field going then. Now, what you can also do with the lister is you can make sure that your scene is neatly organized. So as you can see right here, we have our camera A and camera B. And then we have this oddly named Corona camera here. So if we want to rename it, we can just double click on it and then that add that C to it. And look at that. We've neatly organized all of our cameras just like that. Now, additionally, on top of that, if your camera is buried inside a complex hierarchy, right, and you just want quick access to all of your camera's properties, well, you can just hit the select button and that'll select the camera for you as if you selected it in the viewport or in the managers here. OK, and you can clearly see that now we have access to all of its properties right here. And that also means that you can now also move the thing inside your viewport as you please, because, you know, um, that camera is now your selected 
object, right? So these are just some of the things that you can do with the Corona Lister for when it comes to accessing and controlling your cameras. Now it's really useful in simple scenes, but it's almost indispensable in the more complex scenes with complex hierarchies. But now the Corona Lister doesn't just work with Corona cameras. It also works with your Corona lights. And so that's what we're going to be taking a look at next here. First thing, make sure you're in that lights category, right? And then as you can see in here, you've got all your Corona lights listed. Now things are grouped a bit for easier readability. So here we've got our Corona suns, right? Below them are all your Corona lights and below them are all your Corona light materials because yes, you can see those in the lister as well. Although do note that the Corona sky won't be listed in here. OK, now the idea is the same as with the camera, so easier accessibility and easier control. So instead of having to have to hunt for your lights inside your, uh, you know, scene or layer managers or what have you, well, you can instead just control them through the lister here. So what if we wanted, just as an example, right, increase the sun size? Well, we can just easily locate that parameter and, you know, tweak it to our heart's content. Uh, we can also, uh, for example, uh, control the temperature of our lights by simply tuning the temperature parameter. So uh, let's, for example, uh, tune the temperature parameter for our curtain light here. We're gonna, just going to up it to 8000. And there we go. Right. Um, it's that easy to make changes with the Corona Lister. Uh, now, one thing uh, that you can also do is you can uh, select the lights by hitting the select button here, right? And that's basically the same as selecting them in the scene manager or the layer manager or in the viewport. You're going to see your lights properties in here. And what you're also going to be able to do is you're going to be able to move that light because it is now your selected object. So again, hopefully you can see just how useful the lister can be. Easy access and easy tweakability are the names of the game here. But Corona cameras and Corona lights are not the only thing that there is to the lister because with it, you can also very easily control all the Corona proxies that are in your scenes. So here we've got a ton of them, as you can see, and we can save quite a bit of time for when it comes to, uh, for example, selecting the individual proxies, uh, right? We can also change their uh, visualization method, right? And so on and so forth. Now, if you've got this many Corona proxies in your scene, chances are you might be using Chaos Scatter to scatter them. And if that's the case, well, Chaos Scatter has its own lister as well. You can access it just by simply clicking on its icon slash button in the Chaos Scatter toolbar right here. And then uh, you can manipulate all the basic settings for the scatter object that you'd like. OK, there's a lot of really useful settings in here. And so just as an example, OK, if you wanted to make this forest a bit more, well, timid, a bit less densely populated, uh, we can just locate the count parameter for that specific scatter object and we can change it to whatever we want and it's that easy there's no mucking around in the hierarchy of the scene we got we get all the easy access we want to make basic changes to our scatters from right inside the lister itself now we can't forget about displacement here uh, any corona material that has displacement enabled or any object that has the corona displacement modifier applied to it is going to show up in the corona lister under that displacement category and much the same applies here as it does to all the other things the lister can list. Uh, you can very easily see all your materials uh, with the displacement right here, right? And uh, you can tweak any of their settings as you wish. Uh, one thing to note here is that you have your materials that are driven by displacement listed under this grouping here. And also you have this group here where you have all of your objects that have the Corona displacement modifier applied to them as well. OK, now, unfortunately, you can't select the materials or the objects that are being driven by displacement as you can with, for example, the lights or cameras. Uh, but you still have all of this other control right here. And just as an example of how super useful the Corona Lister can be for displacement is um, you can, if, for example, you're working on a really, uh, you know, heavy scene, you can toggle certain displacement off, you know, just to make everything a little bit more easier to work with. And you can do that just by simply playing with the toggles right here. Now, just as a quick tip, if you ever wanted to disable all of your materials displacement using just one click, 
Well, you can now do that with the help of the Corona Lister. Just locate the toggle all checkbox. And if you uncheck it, well, now all the material driven displacement in your scene is disabled, as you can see. If you want to re-enable it all, just make sure that the toggle, the checkbox is on. And the same applies for your Corona displacement modifier driven displacement as well. You also have that toggle all checkbox slash toggle there. And since we're talking about quick tips, well, here's another one. If you'd like to customize the Corona Lister by deciding which parameters you want it to display for you, uh, well, you can very easily do that just by simply hitting this column visibility button here. Okay, uh, then you can decide which parameters you want the Lister to display. So if you don't ever use, for example, the FOV parameters, the shutter speed parameters, and maybe even the projection mode selector parameter, however you want to call it, okay, you can just hide these parameters from being displayed in the lister. And so now, as you can see, the entire thing is, uh, well, even neater looking and it's conforming to your workflow all that more. And this doesn't just work with your cameras. If we go under lights here, for example, you're going to be able to see that we have our column visibility toggles here as well, right, for each of the lights categories. And so uh, we can just decide which parameters we want the lister uh, to display for us. Now, one thing that we also haven't mentioned yet, and we probably should, are these action buttons right here, okay? If you click on one of them, you'll see that there are additional actions or commands that you gain access to that make doing certain things a lot easier. So uh, with our cameras here, you can see that we can delete a given camera, uh, we can use it in our current viewport, or we can just render from it directly. So just some actions, you know, that you can trigger directly from the lister itself. Pretty useful stuff. But now uh, the actions differ based on the objects you're working with. So uh, for your lights, for example, you'll see that you have different action commands available. That said, with lights specifically, you'll mostly just have the ability to delete them. Uh, but we are not afraid to add new actions to the list here as we add more functionality to the lister itself. Okay, so the extra actions uh, you can think of as extra commands that just wouldn't fit anywhere else in the listers UI but it can still be really useful. All right, and so we're at the tail end of this tutorial. Um, we really hope that you are getting a sense of just how useful the Corona Lister can be. It can really make working in your scenes a lot easier, even if they're simpler scenes. And if they're complex scenes, well then, as we mentioned, the Corona Lister kind of becomes almost indispensable. All right, so thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.